Rod Bigelow, thank you for joining us today. And I, what I would say is the um, most visibly, visually appealing place we've ever done an interview. <laughs> uh, I think that's appropriate. I'm glad it's, it is. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's beautiful. Well, Crystal Bridge has opened its doors um, in November of 2011. And something that's really exceptional is that it allows everyone to come in and, and explore for free. Mm -hmm. Um, that's something that I think is a, a key component of Alice Walton's vision for this museum. Could you speak a little bit about that vision? Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, when Alice grew up in Northwest Arkansas, mm -hmm. she didn't have the opportunity to go to a museum, an art museum like this. And as she got older and started consuming American history through art, American art, uh, she got super excited about it individually. And then uh, later on in her life, she thought, why don't I give this back to where I grew up? So she knew that people in Northwest Arkansas just didn't have access. And when she decided to give her collection to the museum and build this museum along with her family, um, it was a big moment for her to be able to say, I want to create access to, uh, to art for everyone and literally everyone. So making it free, we, we call it sponsored admission because Walmart sponsored that admission. Making it free also changes the game for us because absolutely everyone can come with no obligation. Um, it's not, you don't have to spend a number of hours or how, whatever time you want to, um, but you can come anytime you want for any reason. Now tell me about your background because you, you got two Crystal Bridges before it opened. I did. Right. Tell me a little bit about where you came from sure. and how you ended up here. Sure, I came here in 2010, about a year before we opened mm -hmm. to the public. Um, but I sort of fell into the museum world by accident. I have a finance degree and wanted to be a marine biologist in college, but that didn't work out. Uh, so that's a very circuitous route to okay. getting to an art museum. But I, I started working for an art museum uh, in Tacoma, Washington, a regional museum, uh, and then worked for an art museum in Toledo, the Toledo Museum of Art. And in both of those projects, I really worked on building museums. And so when the opportunity came to build, help build, Crystal Bridges, it was the perfect, it's sort of a trifecta when you get to build a building, mm -hmm. build a staff and help build a collection at the same time. So that's my history. So it's, it's been a while that um, I'm fully dedicated to museums at this point. So you and I met, tell a little bit about our backstory. Yeah. You are a big reason I met downtown Bentonville Inc. You vetted me <laughs> over lunch here at Crystal Bridges. And it went well. It went well, <laughs> hey, I'm still here, so that's good. Um, we spoke a little bit about, you know, finding a piece of art at Crystal Bridges that keeps coming, you keep coming back and saying, I can't believe that's here. Yeah. Um, for me, it was the bust of Hamilton. For anyone that you know, likes the musical, mm -hmm. um, Eliza Hamilton had that in her home well after her husband had died yeah. and would stare at it. I just thought, I mean, you can see, it's I get wild. a little emotional yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's such a beautiful story. It's a, a beautiful love story. And so when I come here, I see that. And I always eye it. Even if I walk past it, I say, mm -hmm. there he is, he's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I can't believe we have that piece here. Yeah. What is the piece for you that you can't believe you work around and get to see every day? Well, first of all, I love the emotion that came from you <laughs> right there because that is the kind of emotion that we hope is evocative of what, mm -hmm. you, what people experience at the museum. And, and I also love that you said we. We have this here. So it's your collection, it's your museum. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Um, and for me, um, I walk to work, and so I get to walk through underneath this monumental spider created by Louise Bourgeois. And it is just this moment that creates a moment of awe for me because it is, it is this powerful image of what Louise Bourgeois believed was uh, a representation of her mother. And she, you know, she, has a, she had a fraught relationship with her mother and her father, and, her mother really brought her through difficult times, and so she made that representation to really lift herself up and her and her mother. So for me, it's Louise Bourgeois. Oh, now see, I'll know the backstory, and that's <laughs> the neat thing about coming in and exploring the backstory of yeah. a lot of these pieces. So Crystal Bridges has permanent collections, and then they balance you balance it with temporary collections, and and you display American art. So mm -hmm. what does it mean to be in a museum of American art? And then we'll talk a little bit about the exhibitions that you bring in. Oh, great question. We are Crystal Bridges Museum of American mm -hmm. Art. And for us, what that means is that we collect artists and show artists that 
have made a significant contribution to America during their career, sometime in the United States. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean you have to be born in America. It doesn't mean you have to have a passport that's American. It means that you've contributed during that time. And so our collection is about 3,500 objects, uh, many of them that you see when you walk in the building. We continue to add to that collection, and we have a commitment to show work here and change it so that when you come once, maybe three months later, you'll see something completely different. Um, as you look around in this space, you can see works talk to each other very differently. So we create experiences, whether they're small exhibitions or changes in these gallery spaces or large exhibitions, um, that really evoke a response from people. So, for example, we have um, a wonderful exhibition right now that is closing uh, late in July, which is called Dirty South, which is an exhibition that was created uh, from the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. So we borrow works from and exhibitions from other uh, museums as well around the country. And then we've got some great exhibitions coming up as well. So uh, there's always something new and exciting happening at the museum. So you have these temporary exhibitions that come in, and, and they do, um, they challenge us to think differently or, mm -hmm. or learn about things that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. um, how do you choose those and what are the reactions that, some of the reactions you've gotten from the public as they've walked through? Good question. Um, so there's not just one story of America mm -hmm. and you can see that when we show works of art or when we bring in exhibitions and so what our objective to do is to bring in multiple stories of America and we are storytellers uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the day and oftentimes we bring uh, exhibitions that are different than the, what we have in the collection. So they tell different kinds of uh, stories and show different kinds of experiences. So uh, the process is complicated because it is uh, not only a logistics challenge about when exhibitions are available or when our team creates them and when we can borrow works of art, but it's also about looking at a very expansive sort of horizon of types of exhibitions that we have. So we don't want to do four photography exhibitions in a row. We look at so the medium, uh, we look at the subject matter, we look at the artists, uh, we look at a whole range of different experiences so that we are really provoking um, different thoughts and ideas from, from people who come and visit. Something that I, you know, I grew up in Bentonville. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have access to this, but my children now have access yeah. to it. And hundreds of thousands of school children explore Crystal Bridges through the Walker School Tour Program. Mm -hmm. um, that We've, cr you, we, we take, <laughs> Crystal take Bridges, ownership, not we me. own it, go for it. <laughs> there is a generational change. Yeah. These children have access, my children, all these children that get to access this museum, um, their lives have, their vision for the world has changed and expanded. And um, it's a really miraculous thing to have that here. Um, just speak a little bit about bringing this, you know, exhibitions and having these collections here in the heartland. Well, you're right. Uh, the Wingate Foundation has been incredibly mm -hmm. generous to sponsor free visits for school children from basically anywhere. And it pays for the buses, the substitute teachers, the curriculum, even lunch. Mm -hmm. So there are no barriers if um, we look at that for school children. We've had over 300,000 school kids visit since we opened. And you know, that's one of the reasons why many of us work in these kinds of spaces is because we have the opportunity to uh, welcome kids from everywhere and anywhere. One of my experiences really about Deer, Arkansas, where a very smart, small school came and visited and you could just see in the eyes of these kids that they were inspired and, and they dreamt very differently than what they had maybe dreamt before. So our, our, our idea is about exposing them to ideas, concepts, and, and dreams. So we have this saying of discover, dream, do come see something new, dream about it, and then take some action. And I think that's what we hope will happen as we start to see generations of kids have the experience and then do what they want with it. Speaking of the do, um, you know, I've had small kids in here, so we yeah. go downstairs oh, the, to the little activity <laughs> the area. Studio, yes. And that's where you see the kids that have gone through, and now they're like, someone give me a crayon, because <laughs> I have things to write on paper. They're inspired. They're yeah. doing puppet shows and running around and you know, sure. creating and artwork. It's, it's a neat thing to watch kind of the byproduct after they've walked through the museum, you know, how that plays out in their little minds. Yeah, and it's, what's also interesting is to watch the adults in that space because they are as yeah. enthusiastic, <laughs> almost competitive when they're really in that space. Really good at the puppet shows. Like, Relax, time to share. <laughs> but yes. 
So and that's something that's exciting that we're going to see in the new exhibition, We the People. Oh, we want to talk about that in a second. Okay. I want to talk about Crystal Bridges is expanding. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah. So talk a little bit about that. I know we've been previewing a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, where are you guys with that and, and what can we expect? So if you come to the museum mm -hmm. now, you'll see to the north end of our property a uh, clearing that um, is being um, deepened and shaped so that we can start constructing the new space. So uh, our new space will be about 100,000 square feet. That's about doubling the public space that we have mm -hmm. to the museum. And the exciting opportunity around that is really about welcoming more stories. And in those stories, one of the real drivers of, of expansion is we can welcome a new collecting initiative around craft uh, and around Native American objects. So we will move into acquiring that work and showing that work very aggressively. And so we'll, we'll sort of basically take everything out of the museum that you know and replace it in a whole new way with this um, integration of all sorts of different works throughout the, throughout the history of American art. Well, that's something to look forward to. Yeah, a lot. I, I don't <laughs> want to neglect something else um, that we need to speak about, and that's the momentary. Oh, yeah. Um, in a, it's an interview I watched with um, Talk Business and Politics, Olivia Walton, who's the board chairperson for Crystal Bridges and also the executive board chair at the momentary, called the momentary a living room for the community. Mm -hmm. Now, it obviously got off to a bit of a rough start <laughs> because if people don't remember the momentary open and then basically immediately shut down because of COVID. We did. Um, but now it's finding its footing and it's this cool place to, you know, explore music and fashion and mm -hmm. all these other things. If someone hasn't experienced the momentary, what's a good like entry point? Yeah. Well, we are, we definitely talk about the momentary as a place, as a hub for art, music, and food. Mm -hmm. It's that straightforward, art, music, and food. And what you, what is exciting about the momentary is that it will be different every single time. So the name itself is momentary. So the idea is that it will change from experience to experience. So you may not know the group that's playing, the musical group that's playing, but it's going to be great quality. Uh, it may stretch the way you think. It may be something completely familiar, but it's something that we have uh, placed in the schedule so that it would inspire your thinking. So. Um, there are festivals, there are um, food experiences, everything from uh, crawfish boils to food truck rodeos to music on the green and in the concert festival space. So it's really exciting to be able to embrace the enthusiasm of that space. It's a different kind of building too from Crystal Bridges. So it's, it it's a very industrial building, an old cheese factory um, where uh, they clearly don't make cheese anymore. but. <laughs> We try to not give a nod to that. So you get to mm -hmm. see the big um, containers where milk used to be stored. So we, we want to keep that history of the space because it is a sort of an iconic Bentonville history, um, but transform that space into great, great art seeking. So you can also see an amazing exhibition when you walk in the door, mm -hmm. um, but it'll be enlivened by performances and dance and music and food throughout the year. There's always something cool going on at the moment, Terry. Yeah, I love that. It's a good tagline. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm picking up my paper for this one because I have a go list for to it. read. And I, I, I want to make sure I get this right. <laughs> there is a rare original print of the U.S. Constitution, one of 11 known in the world, coming to Crystal Bridges um, for the We the People, the Radical Notion of Democracy, which is opening on July 2nd. So this airs July 2nd, so it's opening today. Okay. Um, it will run through January 2nd. The exhibition will include the Declaration of Independence, the Articles of Confederation, the Amendments to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, uh, an authorized edition of the Emancipation Proclamation, and the 13th Amendment signed by Abraham Lincoln. That's a lineup. It is. I mean, that's a, <laughs> it's a lot when you say that. It's like, whoa, the see, pressure. <laughs> yeah. But you were telling me, how this all came to be, and it's really an exceptional story. So, it is. Um, this was a, a serendipitous moment, people at the right place at the right time. Can you tell us how this happened? You bet. Uh, so on occasion, we will bid for works of art mm -hmm. to enter the collection at auction, and we happen to be at an auction where um, after our auction and before the next auction we were attending, there was the sale of the Constitution. and um, so. We were not bidders mm -hmm. <laughs> in the Constitution. And so we uh, had the opportunity to walk down onto the floor and uh, watched it. It was very exciting. 
uh, a lot of activity. And we just got into a conversation with our board chair, Olivia Walton, and we kind of said, you know, can we borrow that? And we kind of like, eh, maybe not. But she knew someone uh, who was at the auction house and cavalierly said, can we, could we borrow this? And before you knew it, we were borrowing the Constitution and bringing it to Crystal Bridges opening on July 2nd. So yes, it's a very serendipitous moment. And now what does it mean to bring these kind of documents to the heartland? This is, this is a, a new, kind of a new place for them to be, a lot of them. Well, I, yeah. I think that this is the first time these, these documents have been together yeah. um, outside of Washington, D.C., and certainly not in the South. So it is a rare opportunity for people to come see some of these founding documents that have shaped the way in which we live as a, as a country and have really been a force within how do we evolve, um, how do we live as individuals and together in unity. The story of our country, you know, it's inspirational, it's strong, it's world changing, it's challenging and complicated. Um, yes. There's a lot of layers to it and there are a lot of layers to the documents are going to be paired with, with other artwork and, and exhibition pieces as well. Can you tell me how you rounded out that story? Yeah, I mean, what's exciting about them being in an art museum mm -hmm. is that we've been able to place them within the context of some of the work that was created at the same moment in which these documents mm -hmm. were created and then been able to surround them as uh, the country has evolved through these documents as well. So our curator, Polly Norstrad, a curator of Native American art, was really instrumental in bringing together the story around these documents. So early in the exhibition, you'll see that we try to create the setting of, you know, the feel of what it was like to be in the moment, which is very difficult to imagine 230 mm -hmm. years ago. But it's, it's really about the radical notion of pulling away as a country from a monarchy and setting off on your own course. It's, it's really a radical act, mm -hmm. and that's why radical is in the title. Um, and it really also looks at the relationship with Native American tribes at the moment when these documents were being formed because there were relationships between Native American leaders and founders that really helped shape those documents going forward. So I think um, we've really tried to tell a story that is a collective story about how do, do these things form and then about your personal and collective responsibility going forward through amendments to the Constitution and and uh, the ways in which we have to stand up for our rights, but also come together as a country to hold ourselves accountable to a more perfect union. This is not, um, this was probably not a logistical, like, cakewalk. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so tell me a little bit about, just give me a little behind the scenes glimpse of, of how that all, you know, you told me how you acquired, but mm -hmm. how do you get them all here and and established and safe? Yeah, all those things are really yeah. important for us. Uh, when we think about doing an exhibition, we usually take two to three years to prepare mm -hmm. for that experience. And that means talking to lenders to borrow their work, to make sure that they're safe and secure, creating stories and interpreting these um, images and objects uh, pretty extensively. Besides the idea of welcoming, I don't know, half a million people that may come to the exhibition. So it, it's a little, it was a little hairy trying to do that in six months or less. And we've been um, really blessed by having great partners. Our teams have stepped up in every single way because we do have other exhibitions happening right. at the same time. So we've, we've got a fashion exhibition that's coming up uh, in September and also a wonderful architecture at home exhibition that's mm -hmm. outdoors. So all these things are happening at the same time. But our team, they're experts. Mm -hmm. They're just... They are incredible, um, skilled individuals that know what they're doing, and they've all banded together to really make this happen. It's been hard, don't get me I wrong. Bet. And And as you see, we'll, we'll be able to have this exhibition for six months, mm -hmm. uh, so they will layer in experiences as we go forward. So there are web experiences, um, there are on the ground experiences here. You will learn things that you never knew about the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, et cetera. That, I mean, it's gonna be a real, real great experience. And it's an exceptional thing to come explore on your own, you know, with a, with a significant other, but also to bring your kids For sure. down here and, For sure. and have you know, those experiences together as a family. Yes, in fact, the studio in our, in our education space is mm -hmm. gonna to be totally transformed into a space that evolves and revolves around the Constitution. So you'll have a totally new look in that space and, 
and you'll be able to write your own uh, amendment to the Constitution if you want to. <laughs> there's, there's lots of opportunities for learning and, and exploring. That will be, do they display them on the wall? Because uh -huh. I want to see what those amendments are. Yeah, yeah, are. for sure. It'll be fascinating <laughs> to see what people want. So July 2nd through January 2nd, you do have to reserve tickets. Yes. Just to make sure that it is free. It's free. But you just have to reserve tickets so we can get in mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And members have priority, so we invite you too. What did I miss? Anything? Oh my gosh, there's so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think one mm -hmm. thing you want to do is check out the um, calendar because mm -hmm. we will have extensive programming built around this exhibition. So. Um, can't tell exactly who they are yet, but they were the, all the names that you recognize. Yeah. What we're trying to do is put together experiences that will balance dialogue around people's perspective about the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and, and where we are as a country. So um, watch the calendar closely because there'll be some exciting things. I've heard some rumors and I want yeah. a front row seat in some of these because <laughs> they sound exceptional. They will be great, I yes. promise. Rod, thank you so much thank for you. joining. Thank you for letting us come in this beautiful space. and. Anytime. I can't wait to see the exhibition with yeah. people soon. Great. Thanks. Thank you.